On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we have another special episode with the Strength and Conditioning crew. We are here talking about one topic. We're talking about youth sports performance training. Specifically, what do we do with our younger age athletes under 12 years old? The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up at Champion PT and Performs. Another big episode with our strength and conditioning crew here. Got another special episode, too, with these guys. Really, it's just one real question, right? Just one question today. But we're talking about some youth sports performance and some, some of the concepts based on that, which, you know, it's, it's a pretty big topic nowadays. So I think it's important that we cover this. So quick intros, myself, Dan Pope, Lenny McCrina here from the Physical Therapy Q. Q? Yeah, crew the department crew department that's right we said it the other day the department of physical therapy air champion physical therapy and performance with neuro mechanical all right sorry too early too early in the episode on that Christy Zermule and Nick Esposito, Kiefer Lammy, and Dewesh Podell everybody is here our strength coaches in the crew that's all of them right we're good we're solid and so everybody's here except for Mike Scudito Dave Tilly had to step out um, we're gonna answer some great questions um, Let's go backwards. Let's go. Let's go this. We'll go this way. So we have uh, Casey K. Cup, Kevin Coughlin from uh, UMass Lowell. We got it. Nailed it. Drew Dooby Dooby Dudek from the University of the the, the Holy Belmont. <laughs> the Belmont. The Belmont University. Right. You get really mad if you don't say it that way. And Nikhil Shaquille O'Neal from University of Kentucky. Who, who gets to read this? It's just one question, right? I got it. Drew's back in down. Wow. <laughs> Drew is back the Passing vet, the baton. Vet yeah. stats and kick yeah. is like, I'm out. <laughs> I'll let you two fight over this one. What do we got, Shaq? Okay, Larry from New York. I recently saw an advertisement for weight training for 10 to 12 year olds. Is that too young of an age to start? If so, what can a young athlete do to enhance their performance? All right, 10 to 12 year old weight training. It's kind of the first concept right there. I wonder, by the way, if this was just marketing. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, do you think they're you think they're just gonna go weight train? It sounds like a bodybuilding program, <laughs> right? Like they're just gonna weight train and nothing else. Like when you say it that way. So I wonder if that's just marketing and it's not as bad as you think. But um, all right, so 10 to 12 year old. Maybe we kind of hit this from like a a, a couple of different fronts. Um, Dewesh, you want to maybe kind of start this off. What sure. what are your feelings on on youth getting started in, in, in weight training? Yeah, so I mean, for, for the, the 10 to 12 year um, year old athlete, it's not that we don't do any strength training for them, right? We might throw in like body weight stuff, some like lower level advanced stuff, but there's kind of bigger things that I'm focused on as far as developing them athletically. Um, and the big things that I kind of start with is like our, what we call the ABC, right? So the, the agility, balance, the coordination. That's probably more of our focus rather than kind of getting them super jacked and super strong because they're pre pubescent, right? They're not right, yeah, right. super jacked. It's not physically uh, possible. Right. <laughs> so um, my focus for them is just making sure that they get a good base of just being able to, you know, function and just move really, really well, whatever whatever sport that they're playing, or whether it's just they're just playing like out in the field for recess or something. Um, but as far as like goals for them, like, I look at just developing, again, basic movement patterns, but two, making sure that they have fun, right? We don't want this to be like like a thing where they gotta like come in and be like, yo, I have to go to the gym today and like work out. Like, I want this to be fun for them. Um, I want them to keep enjoying the sports that they play or whatever physical activity that they do. And then for like a long-term thing, um, my big goal for my younger athletes is making sure that, you know, they continue to be able to enjoy sports long-term for the rest of their life um, and kind of find value in that, like living, a, living an active lifestyle because um, I don't want to be that one coach that turns them away from sports or turns them away from, you know, the gym or anything physically active because they just hated their experience. <laughs> right. I, f I feel like every strength coach in the world is going to get mad at me right now, especially Kiefer, right? But, like, weight training isn't fun for a lot of people. It's a blast for every strength coach, right? But your clients don't like it as much as you do, trust me, right? And so and Kiefer disagrees, right? But it, it, it's it, you got to keep that in mind, especially with the youth, right? So a couple of big points, I think, from Dewey right there. One, concept is there's bigger fish to fry, right? There's definitely bigger fish to fry than, than focusing on the quality of strength, right? So the agility balance, the coordination is like kind of setting that foundation, you know, for that 10 to 12 year old. So, um, so all right, coming to this side of the room, right? I mean, I don't know, Nick, Kiefer, I mean, anybody, whoever wants to jump in. I mean, so when do you make that transition then? 
when do you say, okay, it's time to say your main focus isn't the, the, the baseline stuff now, and okay, let's actually start to try to build some base and strength and stuff. When, when do you do that? You got it, Nick. I mean, I can if you want to. Don't fight over it. This is, gonna be, this is when there's too many people in the room. So, so a lot of the times, like with youth athletes, they all develop differently. So I think it, it's going to come down to you know their co cognitive function, um, and also just have they matured a little bit too. Because you can get a kid who's 12 and you know he's just not quite focused yet. He's just not focused enough to actually put a weight in his hands to allow him to say, let's go deadlift or let's work on that deadlift form. You know, because it can change on a session per session basis. He can come in and have all of his friends with him and have zero focus whatsoever and then the next session be the most focused athlete in the group. So it, it's almost like a case by case, um, you know, progression point for each kid. But the other side of it too is like, we're also building up their confidence, we're building up their autonomy as well to allow them to make those decisions in the gym and take control over their own development in a way too. I like, you know, that's, it's an interesting perspective, right? That like you kind of, I like the approach you took there with the cognitive thing, right? Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, the physical component, right? And heck, I don't know how many decades ago this was now, and although I guess it still comes up every now and then, but it's less, but people used to say stupid things like that. Like if you weight train when you're a youth, like you would stunt your growth, it would like hurt your bony development and stuff like that. And that's been, you know, that's been, you know, completely blown out of the water in, in the literature. In fact, there's lots of benefits in strength training, right? And I think, you know, Dewesh mentioned that, right? We do some strength training. It's just, it's just different, right? It's a different way to do it. So there's benefits. But the cognitive thing, not just the physical thing, I think is super important, right? Weight training is a skill, right? If you do it wrong, you're not going to get as much out of it and you increase your chances of maybe getting hurt or something like that. So that's an interesting thing. There's many studies out there. I think there's like two or three out there. Fagenbaum's the one that's kind of done the most of that. Did I say that right? Was it mm -hmm. Right, that, that's done the most of this. It's kind of like more in the 90s, early 2000s that looked at this and they looked at injury rates in youth participating in weight training. And you know what the kids that got hurt were? The kids that fooled around. The kids that didn't pay attention. It wasn't anything like that. So so cognitive is like super interesting. You gotta be into it and you gotta understand that this is a skill. Or it's not fun, right? These kids wanna be playing Fortnite or something like that. They don't wanna be doing bicep well maybe they do wanna do bicep curls. They don't wanna do, be doing chops and lifts, right? You know, it's like they you know it's it's kinda how, how we kinda think of it. Um, physically though, but like like maybe Christy Kiefer, I mean somebody like physically, when when do they when do you start pushing the weight a little bit there? Is it it's, is it an age? Is it like just based on their development? But I don't know, Kiefer, why don't you start? What do you do? I, well, I think, like, like Dewey said, we start off really working on the ABCs, but I think at the same time, like, I'm gonna steal your word, we're, we're trying to like improve their movement library, right? So like, it's important that the kids come in and learn how to hinge and how to squat and how to lunge and how to push and pull. And it's not about like, oh, we want them to barbell back squat and bench press and stuff. It's like, no, like you need to be able to move in these patterns. And if they can do that solidly, then I think that's the time where you start to add some sort of external loading to them because doing those movements in a slow, controlled manner versus what they're doing out on courts and fields every day, I think is super beneficial to them long term. So you notice the couple of things we haven't really mentioned yet. We haven't mentioned their age. Like we've kind of alluded to it and we've talked about it there. But we've talked about, you know, fun and some of the basics. We've talked about their cognitive level, right? We've talked about their like their ability to use their movement skills. We haven't talked about age, right? There's three things that we always kind of talk about. Is your chronological age, right? That's just how old you are. And that's probably the least significant, right? That's probably the, the silliest one. So if you actually look at the studies, the standard deviation of, of, of your you know, maturation, so like puberty and stuff like that, is plus or minus two. Right, so you know that, right? You've seen a 14-year-old kid that looks like a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old kid that looks like a 16-year-old, right? And you see that kind of, you know, split. And that's just the standard deviation. That means there's plenty on either side of that, right? So we know chronological age is silly, right? And then kind of the strength and conditioning world started then talking about training age and it's just like their experience, right? But then we started finding out that anybody and their brother can just go to the gym nowadays, right? So the duration of their training, if it's crappy, isn't necessarily helpful, right? So great, you've been training for three years like crap. Well, that
that's irrelevant, right? So we started talking about movement age a few years ago. We wrote an article about this on our site a little bit. We talked about it in some of our past champion things, but their movement age, like meaning like what's their experience with the proper movement patterns that like kind of Kiefer mentioned right there. And you kind of think about that a little bit and, and, and then how that goes together. And then, you know, I, I would, you know, putting it together as a group, it just sounds like, you know, there's, there's bigger fish to fry. We got to make sure that we're keeping them kind of interested in having fun, but they have to be ready both, you know, you know, like mentally and physically to be able to start doing this, right? Did I miss anything? No, pretty good. When did you guys start weight training? You remember? Keepers like six months ago. Seventeen. Seven. Yeah, so yeah more late, late, right? Yeah. So yeah. what about you, Christy, as an athlete? Really not until college. And right. It still makes me angry to this day. Yeah. I know, yeah. right? Like I've been so much better. Well, well that's a that's a great point right there. We're amazed at how many high school kids don't start weight training. You know, we're getting away from the ten to twelve year old, but they don't start weight training until college, which is because they're naive, right? And their parents are probably naive, and I don't blame them. They, just, they don't know that they're supposed to do that. And we see all this like untapped resources. It was that pitcher last night that we were talking about. He was like a rail in high school, and now he's like getting big in college. You're like, dang, dude, I wish you did this yeah. senior year of high school, you know? Well, I think like in high school, you see some of your friends or older kids start to go to the YMCA, and so like all you see is, is barbells and dumbbells and all this stuff. And so from an exercise standpoint, loading up like that is like super daunting, especially if you're not a strong kid having an opportunity to learn how to move well before you start doing all that stuff puts you in a much better position early on. Yeah, that's a good point, that's a good point. So I guess if you're a parent, maybe to summarize here, I think, because I don't think any 10 year olds are listening to this podcast, right? <laughs> parents probably aren't either, I don't know. It's just <laughs> Lenny and I's parents. Right. Janet, and Margaret. <laughs> Janet and Margaret are doing this. She probably listens, <laughs> definitely listens. So, <laughs> so any, any, anyway, so uh, if you're a parent, right, so like what's the big take home message here is that um, you should find a place that probably specializes in sports performance. I don't think you want to send your kid to the Y, right? Or like kind of Kiefer said, and just said, go get it. They're probably, you know, probably best case scenario, they're, they're going to be fine. Worst case scenario, they may even like hurt themselves like, or, or put themselves more prone to injury. Uh, I don't think they're gonna optimize themselves. So I think you wanna find a sports performance place, but then more importantly for the youth, you probably want it to be age specific and not just a generic one where your 12 year old's working out next to a 16 year old or they're all doing the same program or something like that. Like you have to have like a specific youth program like we have a champion. I think that's like kind of the important component to get. So good, anybody else? Pretty solid. K-Cup, you good? Good. Oh, good. Rock and roll. Curious, when did Dan start to lift? I was going to say that. Probably Six two. months? <laughs> two? No, legitimately, probably around 10. And then probably really picked up more in like high school, being in high school. Right. But, you know, Dan's an, an uh, early trender, right? So, you know, <laughs> trend, you know what I mean? Like, he was, a, he was ahead of the curve right And he's the most jacked one, so what does that tell us? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's it's not, you're not going to get, I think the big thing is you're not going to get hurt if you do probably start weight training unless you do something stupid. But an adult's going to get hurt doing something stupid, too. So, it's not necessarily bad. I just think there's a better way to do yeah. it. Maybe that's a good summary. I would rather a kid start early so that they're not the 18-year-old kid that comes in and can't touch his toes and can't do a body exactly. squat. Right. I was, a lot of our, our youth that do our youth classes that we have then carry on and graduate to our kind of our sports performance classes. One, because they've set the base and they see the future, but two is there's there's high school kids right next to them working out that they're like, oh, all right, I get it. That's what's next. I can't wait to get to that. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a progression. So. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Great episode. Thank you, strength coaches. I appreciate it. Um, head to MikeRonald.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us questions. Anything you guys want to talk about, we'll answer them on the episodes in the future. And head to iTunes, Spotify, rate, review, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode.